Hi right, everyone, welcome back to Comic Frontline. Jay here with the um, special DVD review, which is an advanced review of Son of Batman. Now, if you want to follow this from the comic books, you would um, not pick up Damien Son of Batman. That is not what this is based off of. This is based off of the Grant Morrison run of um, Batman. He did an arc which ran in um, Batman number 655 through Batman number 658. Um, so that's going to be what this is uh, um, based off of. But it's very loosely based off of it. And now the prelude story, if you want to go back and get that, is in a graphic novel called Batman Son of the Demon. That would tell you the the story before getting into this. So if you want to do a little bit of reading on that one, I recommend it because it does give you a little bit of um, inside information. Um, now this is pretty different than the story arc in Batman. There are some new characters thrown in, there are some new elements thrown in. So I'm going to um, actually give you a spoiler free review and then I'm going to go more in depth and do the spoiler review and I'm going to let you know when I'm going to start giving spoilers and you can stop it, okay? So Spoiler free review is this is basically the a movie that initiates Robin into the Bat family. You're gonna see um Damian Wayne, Batman's son, being introduced. Batman finds out he has a son in this movie. Damian becomes Robin and joins Batman on his crime fighting crusade. Yeah, that's pretty much what everyone knows. So there's not no spoilers. And that's all I can say without giving away spoilers. So, now I'm about to go into the spoiler review. Okay, that means that you want to stay for the spoiler review. Um, this movie starts off, it adds a character to it because it adds Slate Deathstroke. Now, I don't mind Slade being it because the way that he was brought into it is actually a good reason. There are elements of Slade being in it that I don't like. One little nitpicky thing is um, how he gets his eye taken out. Now, I don't mind he got his eye taken out in this fashion. I'm not going to give away exactly how, but my big thing is that before he gets his eye taken out, he already has the black and orange mask was above up here so now we don't know if it has two eyes or one eye or anything but all his men are wearing a logo on their um, right shoulder and that logo is an, um, a circle with orange backing and a black like um, skull type face with you got it one eye so Already his symbol is one eye, orange and black. His mask is orange and black. It's going to have the one eye. It's the same eye that um, he can see out of. So it's like, all right, his, um, you know, he got the same eye. His left eye is okay. His right eye is the one that got taken out. So, you know, it's kind of, eh, you know, too on the point. They should have done that better. Like, went with a different thing. If you want to just do the black. A black and um, orange circle, something like that. Fine, but don't give me the you know one eye. So that's just a minor little thing. Another thing I don't like about Slade being in here is that um, he's really, really violent. I mean, it's not so much that he's violent because that is Slade. He is Deathstroke. I expect that from him. But he's violent towards a ten-year-old child. I mean, there's a point in the movie where, and I'll get into more of this. So, um, but he's fighting with Damien, and he actually, like, pins him by stabbing him in the hand with one, and then with the sword in his arm here, he slices him, you know, it's very graphic, this battle scene. So, um, the movie is rated PG-13. I honestly think that it should have got a higher rating, maybe, maybe invent something for it, because... It's a little bit more graphic than PG-13. I would say maybe around 15-ish because there are some um, 
talk about prostitution, there's drug use, and these are things that aren't needed in the story, like, they're not mandatory for the story. Um, Killer Croc saying about him being on steroids and all that, he was like, um, one thing about being on steroids is I get the munchies. Now, the line could have been delivered because, you know, he wanted to bite, um, Batman. It was all set up so Talia could say, I'm the only one that could bite you. So, they wanted to do that. All he had to say was, the, the fighting gets me hungry or something. It works up my appetite. Something like that. And then, had Talia say, I'm the only one that can bite you. You know? So, I think that was a little unnecessary to say about the drugs. And then, they go into the drug uses again. Um, Ubu, Raish, his um, loyal bodyguard, most of the time, is working with Slade against Raish Agul because Slade is mad that he was like the heir apparent to um, the League of Assassins until he dis um, Raish Agul discovered Batman and then Talia and him hooked up and they had Damien. So Slade now all of a sudden is burned by the spurn and he's back to take over the League of Assassins by a hostile takeover. Um, which was a really good twist to this, because I liked it, um, but you didn't need, like, um, I was saying about prostitutes, Ubu's, like, in Gotham to get prostitutes, he could have been in Gotham for anything, you know, just, he wants to hide out in Gotham, keep an eye out on Batman or something like that, you know, give me another reason in prostitutes, and then there's another one where Commissioner Gordon almost says that he's at, a, um, you know, a house for that, you know, but he prevents saying the word, just like I just present, um, prevented saying the word because the Damien was there. Um, there's also some, the twist with um, Slade being there, I do like it, like I said, because it does give us that, um, that new twist, which in the comic book, she just brought him there and said, my father is dead, you need to take him. You know, this is someone's after her and after the league, so she wants to protect her son. I like that. It humanizes Tali a little bit for me in this, and it um, actually gives her a real reason why. But then there's things that I like better in the comic book art, because in the comic book art, Batman was very cautious. You know, he he put a hood over Damien's head so you can see where they were going to the Batcave. He made sure that Damien wasn't already going on the internet, so he couldn't scan around and find out, you know, where the Batcave is. Because he didn't believe, he didn't trust Damien yet. This was all skipped in the movie, where Batman just let him drive. You know, they just drove to the Batcave. Nothing, no knockout gas, nothing. Um, he, he was allowed to have free reign of the house, which Batman isolated him in the comic book arc. So I thought that was... A step back. I would have liked Batman to be a little bit more cautious. You know, this is just someone who's saying, "Hey, this is your kid here. Take him." And you know, she's in the League of Assassins. You don't, you know, you don't trust someone who is the heir to the League of Assassins. That's not someone that is, you know screams, "Trust me, I'm trustworthy." Especially when you find out that she raped him, which is another thing I'm not crazy about. They actually say that she, like, they basically say that she raped him. She's like, "Remember when?" that night, and he's like, yeah, I remember you drugged me, and she's like, but you liked it, and he was like, yeah, kind of cheapened the rape stuff, which we talked about on the live show, is a very sensitive subject, and I think this handled it very poorly, especially in an animated show, which they didn't even need to talk about, because you said our liaison, or whatever, you know, our flame, they didn't have to go into the detail that she raped them, that was unnecessary, I think, um, so, there's no Tim Drake, and I'm, I really dislike this, because this is the second movie, a Batman movie, where Tim Drake could have been in it, because he was in the story arc. The first one was Under the Red Hood, okay? Tim Drake was in that story. He played a part of that story. He was cut from the movie. Tim Drake played a part in this story. He was cut from the movie. In both, they replaced him with... Dick Grayson, which I like Dick Grayson, you know, he's the first Robin, he's Nightwing, a favorite character of mine, but Tim Drake is getting no respect in the comic books, I mean, and now he's getting none in the movies either, 
they could have used Tim Drake in this. I think it would actually have been better because Commissioner Gordon, when he sees um, Damien as Robin, he's like, another one? And, you know, as far as we know, because they don't mention Jason Todd perishing or, you know, anything like that, they just say Dick Grayson was Robin and that's it. So, as far as we know, there's only been one Robin in this animated world. Uh, another thing, I don't like how Damien became Robin in the movie. It was too easy for him. I like the comic book version because Damien did it on his own terms, you know. He went out and put on the Robin costume, made his own costume, and he went out and he went on patrol without Batman approving it, you know. And then he Batman reined him in and got him on schedule. This was like, Batman was just like, okay, you're going to be training with me. And Dick Grayson's like, well, Nightwing's like, I'm not going to like this, am I? You know, it, I think it was too easy. With that said, I do like Damien's motivation more in this. In the comic book, he's just the kid with the chip on the shoulder who wants to, you know, he's just a killer and a chip on the shoulder. In this, he's doing something honorable. He's trying to kill the guy who killed his grandfather, you know. He's out for a blood vengeance, which, which um, I think fits Damien's character, for one. And it's also, it lends some heart to the character who is, you know, a very heartless person. But this kind of softens him up to you a little bit more. Uh, overall, I'm going to say the animation is okay. It's the best anime animation movie that we've gotten out of DC. Because this is still um, Japan-inspired animation. But it's better because I think it actually makes more sense with this movie. Where Flashpoint and all of them, I don't think it really made sense to use this um, animation style. But with this, it does because we got ninjas. We got, you know, all this martial arts going on. It kind of fits the style. It brings you into that setting. So I'm okay with it for that. Um, the voice casting, it could have been a lot better. The really stars of the voice casting for me, there's one star, which is um, anyone who watches NCIS knows the, um, Ducky. He does the voice of um, Alfred Pennyworth. Perfect voice. He has a dry sarcasm of Alfred. It just fits Alfred. When I see um, Alfred and hear the voice, it totally clicks in my head. That's who Alfred is. I'm okay with that. Damien, exact total opposite. He, he's coming off as this snarky, you know, character who has a chip on his shoulder, pure like jerk. He wants to kill people. He has no conscience, and then he sounds like. A typical eight-year-old kid, you know, if this was, if he did a voice of Dick Grayson or Tim Drake, it would be okay. Even a Jason Todd Robin would have been great, but for Damien, you need someone who can get a little bit more angst and kind of evilness in their voice, you know. This was a little too childlike for me. Batman was borderline, he was okay. Jason O'Mara does a great job, um as an actor, but I don't know, I think Kevin Conroy really spoiled me for Batman, because when I see Batman, I hear Kevin Conroy's voice in my head, so I think that it's like ruined it for any other actor, or they can never replace him, but Jason Myra does do a good job on this. Um, overall, I would say not the best DC movie, it's, and it's very violent, and very bloody, very gory, and it does do mature themes. So, like I said, don't let this for your little kids. If you got a six-year-old, seven-year-old, don't let them watch this because they don't need to be exposed to this violence and this blood. If you want to, that's up to you, but I wouldn't let a six- or seven-year-old watch this because it's not that type of movie. Um, I would give this probably three and three-quarter stars because... 
it's not quite a four stars and it's not a three and a half stars. So I'll say three and three quarter stars all together. Do I recommend getting it on um, DVD? I I would because it's a good story, but you got um, the voice acting kind of takes away from you. But the story is pretty good, and the animation does fit it. So I would say you can get it on DVD, or if you want, you can wait for it to come on like Netflix, or because you know Netflix is working with um, DC now again. So maybe you can get on Netflix when it comes out, or through one of the um, online DVD rental sites, you know, like Redbox or whatever. So that's my review for it. Don't forget to check out Cat's review on her channel, and Chris and Brand did a live review on Chris's channel. I'll put the li um, the links to both of them in the description, and you um, can expect more DVD reviews, advanced reviews from all of us at Comic Frontline. And we're going to actually do this on Media Madness. We're going to do commentary on um, Slime Batman on Media Madness when the movie comes out. So look for that in a couple weeks. We got Vampire Diaries, Transformers, the 1986 animated movie, and then we got um, Son of Batman coming up on Media Madness. Well, those are my thoughts. Now I want to know what yours are in the comments below. Also, like this video, subscribe to Comic Frontline, check out and subscribe to my channel, The Comic Book Theater, check out Comic Frontline, the site for all the latest previews, reviews, news, and interviews. For even more news on all things related to comics, comicrelated.com is your source for all your comic book needs with daily updates. And don't forget to like and follow me and Comic Frontline on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. I'll include all these links in the description below. Until then, I'll catch you in the next review.